Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So, have you ever tried adding a spare key to a Volkswagen and you ended up deleting all the keys in the immobilizer system, okay? This can be a very stressful situation as what you thought would be a simple routine procedure can end up a nightmare, especially if you don't have a backup plan, okay? So, in this presentation, I'm gonna share with you uh, a case study that my client went through and I'm going to just show you my methodology on how I was able to get him the end result that he wanted okay and this is titled how to fix an unintended key deletion on the 2015 Volkswagen Jetta with the IM608 for those who are new to the channel welcome my name is Curtis Harden I'm an independent all tail diagnostic consultant if you'd like to purchase your tool and get the mentorship that you see in this presentation, go to alltailtech.co.za and book the diagnostic tool consultation, all right? So this is what you're gonna be learning today. The framework to troubleshoot the unintended key deletion. You're gonna understand the Volkswagen Emo systems and strategies to do if the cluster is faulty and the backup plan to complete this procedure, okay? So we're going to be using, in this case study, the IM608, a Windows 10 laptop, and the original dealer key. Not an aftermarket key, the dealer key, okay? So a bit of background. My client was attempting to add a key for his brother-in-law, just as a favor. You know, wanted a, a spare key. And in the process, he deleted all the keys in the system. The car wouldn't start. It was a nightmare, okay? So he needed urgent assistance as his brother-in-law needed his vehicle and he did not want to leave a bad impression. So you know with family, you don't want to mess around with, with, with stuff like that, okay? So the question that I'm sure a lot of you guys have is why do the keys get erased when trying to add the key, okay? So this is what I think it is, all right? I call this data overwrite. So some key addition procedures require a temporary erasure in the existing key data. And if it doesn't completely uh, do its job correctly, you could be left with a clean slate, so to speak. It, it'll delete everything. Another thing could be the software on the Autel. Maybe it wasn't up to date, or for whatever reason, it just wasn't compatible with the software on that particular module. The other thing could be incorrect procedures. I've seen and heard of some people who reached out to me and said like they tried to do it but they clicked the wrong button and they ended up you know deleting all the keys in the system most people will who aren't familiar with this system they'll click key learning instead of add key when you click key learning that will um, erase everything in the ignition system okay so those are my two cents on why this could happen now the first step is to diagnose the vehicle, all right? So the reason why I feel this is important is because working on uh, Volkswagen in particular, I've been in situations where I've been trying to relearn a key and it wouldn't work, or let's say my client was trying to do it and it wouldn't work, and when I e do a diagnostic scan and erase everything and do it again they're like kurt like what did you do differently you know and i just erased the stuff that was on the uh immobilizer system or you know whatever faults that were there so that's what i want to do i want to see what faults we have in this system and uh erase them okay so we're going to go auto scan and this thing has a lot of uh em modules so the one i'm going to pay attention to are the cluster the anti-theft the gateway um the engine control modules anything that's going to be connected with the immobilizer system that's what i want to take a look at okay so let me speed this up the first one i'm going to go into is the uh instrument cluster we have two faults there all right, let me see, we're at 100%. So we went on the cluster. All right. And then when this pulls up, system data loan, we're gonna go to trouble codes. Okay. 
And then we have two faults here, U12000 and U12100. So data bus faulty, data bus no communication, okay? So what I'm gonna do from this point, I'm gonna erase this, attempt to erase it, all right, and hope it doesn't come back, and then I'm gonna pretty much erase everything uh, by clicking the quick erase button, okay? Just so I'll know we have a clean slate and hopefully none of these codes will come back, okay? So once that is done, now what I'm gonna do is attempt the key addition to, to confirm the problem, okay? So we're in the menu already. All right, we're gonna click add key. I'm gonna follow the prompts. If this is smart key, okay, establishing communication. So we're gonna get the dealer key, put it into the XP400 Pro as it says, and we're going to click OK and follow the prompts. All right, so the dealer's in the programmer now. Fast forward it a bit, you guys. OK. All right, select a type manually. Select one if you're not sure of the type. Select two if the learning fails. OK, so we're going to click type one. and fail to program okay um we tried multiple things okay key learning we tried a bunch of stuff it didn't work so i could confirm the complaint okay so at this point what i want to do is do the all keys loss now when doing this particular procedure we're going to take out the cluster and how do i know we need to take out the cluster it's because when I went into the expert mode, it picked up the uh, what type of instrument cluster it is. All right. And for those of you who don't know, like I want to explain what these mean. Okay. VDO is a short for it's a German company. I can't I can't say it in German. I'm going to you're going to laugh at me, but they manufacture these um, instrument clusters uh, for this vehicle. And then the NEC is a Japanese company that specializes in making the semiconductors, okay? And then the 24C64 is likely where all the key data is stored on the EEPROM, okay? So that's what that is, all right? And yeah, the, the year is different, but that's what the Altel picked up, okay? So the way we're gonna approach this is first, we're going to do the backup ABS coding. This is mandatory. You have to do this to, to do this procedure, and we're going to do it in the vehicle through the OBD. Step two and step three, we're going to do it on the bench. Okay, and then step four, five, and six, we're going to go back to the vehicle and do it via OBD. Okay, so now that you know the steps, we're going to, we click all keys lost, and we're going to start with the backup ABS coding procedure. All right, so we're at backup ABS coding, executing. All right, ABS coded backed up successfully. So now, for this operation, use the programmer, we're gonna go on the bench, okay? And as you can see here, my client got everything set up, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and finish the process, the prompts. All right, we're going to click OK. OK, so now we're on the right EEPROM. So this is where we take the cluster, we put it back onto the vehicle, and then we connect our IM608 via OBD again. OK. All right, so you can see here, connect the OBD connector and turn the ignition on and press OK. All right, so now we have this prompt. We're gonna select type one. All right, so we select type one. The instrument cluster will black out. All right, so it failed. All right, would you like to try it again? We're gonna click yes, and we keep on doing this. And as you can see, nothing is working. All right, so what I said was, you know what? Let me go back into the 
diagnostic menu and see if these fault codes came up and they came back up. So this tells me that we have a faulty component. Okay, and then after discussing with my client, doing some testing, and um, he actually shared with me that his brother-in-law mentioned how his cluster was having some issues. Now, I don't remember remember the symptoms, but he's, he, they, he did know about the cluster being faulty. This is the cluster right here, the J285, okay? So, what I wanted to do was actually look at the circuit board because my client did tell me that the uh, 24C64 chip wasn't on here. He just, this was the only like eight-legged uh, EEPROM that he saw. And when you look closely, it's a TJA1040, okay? Now what this does, it facilitates the high-speed CAN communication, okay? On, on the CAN bus, okay? But it doesn't store the EMO data, okay? So just think of this as like a, a switchboard operator that's essential for diagnosing communication errors. That's what this is for, okay? Now the 24C64 on the other hand is an EEPROM that stores the chip data, okay? That we need, all right? So I thought to myself, you know what? I don't think the Altel actually can do this all keys lost. And when I checked up on the, um, uh, the, 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 the options where you can see all the special functions, you can see we have two options here, right? So what I'm thinking, it's this guy through process of elimination because we could add the key. The option was there, um, but this option wasn't like, it, it wasn't on the system, okay? Based on what we actually saw, that that uh, the 24C64 chip wasn't there. So then I said, okay, it's time to throw in the Hail Mary, all right? This is my strategy. First, I told him to get a used cluster, and I said, you can get a new one, depending on the price, but get a used one, that's fine. Um, the only thing about getting a used cluster is the mileage will be different, okay? And I, I don't have a solution for that for the time being, okay? We'll use the IM608 to configure the used cluster. Now, the way you're going to do this is you're going to put the original cluster on the vehicle. And then when you go into the EMO systems under, like, guided functions, they have a process for, like, replacing. And it will inhale the information from the, from the original cluster and transfer it on to the donor cluster, okay? Then I told him, are you sure we have a dealer key? And he said, yes, this, it was the original key. And I said, okay, we're gonna install the Otis software, okay? And he was like, what's the Otis? And I told him, Otis is the Volkswagen and Audi offboard diagnostic and information system. So basically you can have dealer level uh, capabilities with this you can it actually works a lot better in terms of diagnosing than the Altel okay because it's the dealer okay but you can do your diagnostics special functions um, and if you have locksmith credentials you can do um, key coding okay and programming all right but the problem is this is a five-step process the first process it's a hundred dollar fee for the application then step two and step three take about a week to get uh, your computer you know, registered. And then when you get to step five, this subscription is one week for about 130 bucks, okay? Now, we don't have time for that, all right? His, his brother-in-law needs his vehicle. So I told him, I said, look, I have a solution. I said, give me 300 bucks, and what I'll do is I'll install the software. I have access to the uh, EMO credentials, all right? So you don't have to go apply for a locksmith. And I said, after that, you can keep the software on your computer. You can do diagnostics, and when you want to do any type of uh, key relearning um, procedure, you can just contact me, pay like a fee, and then I can log you in there, and we can do it, okay? So that's what I did. So the installation took about an hour. 
and now we're going to adapt the dealer key with the Otis software. Okay, so as you can see here, we have all the uh, control units. All right, and this 25 is the EMO system. All right, WEG, it's a German term for immobilizer control. Okay, so the first step we're going to do is we're going to go to guided functions and then we're going to go to adapt keys. All right, and then we're going to follow the prompts. All right, let me go back again. Adapt keys. All right, we're going to follow the prompts. Click go continue. All right, we're going to click continue again. Now it's asking us to enter the username and password. So if you had a locksmith credential, this is where you would be prompted to put in. All right, so we put that in there. And now we're going to go ahead and go with the procedure. Okay. All right, so it's asking us here, enter the number of keys. So we just want one key. Now he has a aftermarket key, but the Otis software does not work with aftermarket keys. Okay, so just keep that in mind. The strategy that we're gonna do afterwards is use the IM608 to add the aftermarket key. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, follow the prompts here. All right, so it's asking us to hold the key in the, in the coil reader and confirm by pressing the complete button, okay? So once that's done, we're gonna go ahead and click uh, complete. All right, it should be coming up any second now. There we go. And then we're gonna get a confirmation. Sending data. All right, and I think we are pretty much done. The key ad adaptation has been carried out successfully end of test okay so we will go back erase the codes and uh we'll start the vehicle and my client did confirm here here are pictures that the vehicle <laughs> is started you can see here it says it's alive and uh next we're going to use the im608 to add the key but <laughs> I can't show you because his battery died, all right? But I will tell you guys, he was able to do it, all right? He was able to add that key, okay? So in summary, fault codes aren't just error codes, they're clues. Clear them before you do the procedure, okay? As I said before, with these systems, they're very sensitive. Clear the code, do the procedure, and if it goes through, great. If it doesn't, we need to figure out what that code is, okay? Remember, the 24C64 EEPROM is the memory bank. The TJA1040 is a CAN transceiver, in the, is the messenger, okay? Don't mix those up. If you open up the cluster and you see the 24C64, that holds the EEPROM data. The other transceiver does not, okay? Always have a backup strategy, especially when dealing with the volatile systems um, like immobilizers on the Volkswagen um, using the Otis system. So it's better to stay ready so you don't have to get ready because as a locksmith, you have a lot of pressure on you and to go and get this, you know, software, it, if you do it, you know, the, the traditional way, it's going to take you a week. Rather have it on you so when it does happen, you can just add that key with no problem. Okay, it's a good backup to have. And then lastly, you need the original dealer key when using the Otis software. You can't use an aftermarket key. It needs to be a dealer key, and a dealer key is a pre-configured key, okay? So that's pretty much it, guys. I hope you enjoyed this presentation. As I said before, if you get in this situation, you can Go to alteltech.co.za, book the diagnostic tool consultation. I'll assess you and see if I'll be able to help you out and uh, with this Otis software. And if you want to purchase your tool and want my mentorship, head on over there too. With that, you guys have a wonderful week, and I'll talk to you later. Cheers. Bye.